My name's Ted White. I'm the founder of Soda Sound, we're a certified Dolby Atmos mixing and mastering studio. I founded Soda Sound back in 2018. Uh, back then, it was just myself and Isabel. And uh, since then, we've grown a really tight little team and we've been a part of some incredible projects over the years, including working with Dua Lipa, uh, London Symphony Orchestra, as well as many other artists and brands. We'll be going into the Atmos Room B, where uh, Joe predominantly works and where I do a lot of the Atmos mastering. And we'll be looking at uh, a recent uh, Atmos master that we've been working on and how we incorporate the Aurea into our workflow and how it's sort of helped progress um, our speed of working and also our just day-to-day -day way, way of working the studio. So you joined us back in Atmos Room B to uh, look over a spatial master of uh, an Atmos mix that Al um, was in charge of for uh, AK The Saviour and Sagoon, uh, titled No Scars. Um, yeah, we chose this track just because it kind of can showcase internally for us, um, you know, what what we would do um, for a spatial uh, spatial master and how it may differ and also how it can be very similar to a, a stereo master in regards to in, in, in regards to many ways. We're in Pro Tools currently and we've set the renderer to binaural so that you guys at home can be listening on headphones and hearing what we're hearing in the studio. And uh, as I mentioned, I've got Al here who mixed um, this particular track in, in Spatial and I did the Spatial Master. So between the two of us, we just want to walk you through the process of uh, of the track and, and what we've done at this master uh, stage. So as you can see here, we first and foremost, we brought the um, Atmos file into Pro Tools. And you can see all of Al's um, objects as I'm scrolling through here. And then at the top, uh, we have the bed. And this basically is how we start first and foremost doing a spatial master. We're bringing in the uh, original file and um, organizing and separating um, in sort of in order that makes sense to, to the master engineer, which was in this case myself. And first and foremost, I just like to listen through the track. And obviously, because I know Al so well, uh, I was hearing this, uh, you know, throughout the week he was working on the track. So I already had a pretty good idea of um, where it was and, 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 you know, the areas that maybe when I started to touch it, what I would want to sort of, uh, for a better word, hone in on. Um, but equally with that being said, with a master, you know, it, we're doing very, very, very minutia details and very small, uh, movements, um, if and when needed, um, you know, we're not slapping plugins and automation on everything here, uh, because hopefully, you know, as Al has done a great job on this, there's not too much to do. And that's the point. Um, so I'm trying to take what Al's already done and just try and expand on it where I feel that the moments can be expanded and if they can be expanded. So for example, I was adding um, subtle compression to um, the bed just to make sure that it sort of um, felt that it was um, controlled further, uh, like, you know, a little bit more than what Al had already really uh, done really well. And, but equally making sure that that controlled bed is sitting well against the objects as well, because obviously we want the whole uh, Atmos mix and master to feel as one and not to have you know, a bed sitting miles below or above the, the objects. What we can do, if you, you're cool, that we can start looking into the track and start playing some bits and sort of getting into the nitty gritty. I think it's, it's like as Ted said, uh, you know, obviously this is a master. It, obviously it looks like we've got lots of different channels there, but they are just the objects. Um, so you know how with stereo, you'd have your left and right. These are all just our different objects. So we're kind of, we're doing a master, but we've got a little bit more control because of the yeah. way we've bounced out the session. Exactly. So it's more like a stem master on the objects with control of the bed. Yeah, really well said. No, totally. And I mean, in regards to, if we just play you a bit of the track so you can see after all this time what, what we're talking about. No. It's all in your brain, it's all in your mental Give you that healing nigga like a sensu, uh Yeah Been through the pain, that 
shit is sensual All of my scars, that be my credentials uh. Yeah It's all in your brain, it's all in your mental Give you that healing, nigga, like a sensual uh. Yeah Cool, so I think that gives a good example of uh, the sort of vibe of the track and it's sort of uh, pronounced uh, um, bass frequencies and sort of how it leans quite heavily into the bass and the sub especially. And um, what I wanted to do when taking Al's uh, Atmos mix here is kind of know that you've done a really good job on that and it was already really controlled. Uh, but I just wanted to actually look at some of the highs and where some of some, a little bit more of the zing could come out for a better word. So if we kind of dive into this in more detail here and look at some of the objects and what sort of, uh, you know, we've done to the master here, um, specifically the vocals, if we look at those first and foremost, um, and just solo these here. I used a plugin called um, Golfos just to add a little bit more of the high end back in. Um, it's not that it was not there, it's just that I felt that it could have a little bit more sparkle in certain areas. Um, AK's vocal on this is like really full bodied and it's got a really nice sort of low mid I feel. Mm -hmm. But um, I just wanted to try and add a little bit more zing to the, the higher frequencies, especially when it's competing a little bit next to the sort of um, the vocal sample and I wanted to try and further enhance and those uh, areas and um, as you were saying with a track like this where there's sometimes um, stem, stem limitations mm -hmm. um, that's something that we kind of collaborate on as a special mixing engineer and a mastering engineer whereby we kind of have these collaborative um, sort of conversations about how we can um, you know, utilize our tools as best as possible to get the most out of the track, essentially. But whilst we're on vocals, um, another thing that we did to the, the vocals here was to add some more saturation under what, after the conversation we already had, I knew you had in the session. But at this stage, at the mastering stage, I'm not seeing, <laughs> obviously, the tools that you used in, in your mix session. So, um, what I wanted to add was just a little bit more um, sort of grit, for a better word, to certain areas in the objects, uh, or should I say certain um, elements that were objects, for example, the vocals here. So if we just play this with and without, hopefully you'll be able to hear um, this um, change. So I'm going to play it with now. When that Zy, I'm a man of peace, got a home to grow, got a fam to feed, got a water them crops when you plant them seeds, sure they give me that top, I'm a man with needs, them boys ain't tough, them mind them flee. Oh. Okay, and now we're going to play um, a version without those elements. When that Zy, I'm a man of peace, got a home to grow, got a fam to feed, got a water them crops when you plant them seeds, sure they give me that top, I'm a man with needs, them boys ain't tough, them mind them flee. Oh. So again, Everything we're doing at this stage is very subtle. However, you know, when you're doing that sort of minute detail, layer upon layer, it all builds up to hopefully what is a better um, end product. Mm -hmm. And, you know, more importantly, as a mastering engineer, you're the final, you know, part of the process before it gets shipped off to the client. And, you know, by the time Al's had his, you know, hundredth hour on the track, I think I would argue that, um, you know, I don't want to speak for you, but it's just nice to have another set of ears mm -hmm. and another opinion, more importantly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, like the distortion there, like the the vocal is front and center and you want it to be gritty, you want it to be dark and, and you've brought out that with the distortion, which is, is great. Yeah. So I think one thing that would be cool to maybe look at together is the, um, what is one major part of the track, which is the sort of um, vocal sample and how that is a recurring factor throughout the whole of the track. And it kind of holds the track Absolutely. together. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really love the sort of placement of where you put that and, and how it sort of over time sort of swells a little bit. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to mess around at all with any of your movement. I just wanted to um, look at where we could make it sort of sonically sit comparable to the other elements mm -hmm. so if we just play that sample for a second so that you guys at home know what we're talking about so 
So yeah, I mean, as we just were mentioning, that sample sort of plays throughout the whole uh, track and it's sort of glitched and sort of processed and sort of put through the wrangle a little bit to kind of create these really interesting moments throughout the track, which I think that the, you know, the artist did a really good job with. Yeah, like you said, the, the energy of it, just, it's not just consistent, is it? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. constantly moving and yeah. uh, 100% changing. And it's continually changing throughout the whole of the record. And um, because of that, I wanted to sort of, again, apply some subtle processing to it to sort of bring out some of the elements, but equally because of the varying changes throughout the track on that particular sample, uh, dynamically it changed quite heavily throughout. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to tame those moments ever so slightly. And I'm again, I'm talking maximum here, sort of, you know, two and a half, three dB. Uh, which we were doing. So, I mean, I can play you again a with and without. So if we just do, um, you know, uh, a with first and I'll put the plugins on screen. So here, what we got on screen are the plugins that are on the, um, uh, the lead sample. And so I want to play you a with and without so we can hear at the Atmos master stage what they're doing to the process of uh, the track. So I'll just play this now. Okay, so as you can see, it's really minute uh, in terms of the level of compression that we're taking out on uh, that particular um, vocal sample. But hopefully when I play you uh, before and after here, you'll hear that the, you know, again, as we've just seen on the, on the, the previous um, processing on the vocal, that all these things hopefully add up like with mastering to a better end product. So if we take these off, Okay, so again, super subtle, but it's just sort of trying to add a bit more of the high end back in, as well as sort of controlling some of the, um, you know, some of the dynamics at various points, but very, very subtly. So in terms of the bass, as we mentioned, that's like, that was a keynote from yourself and also a keynote that we knew was running throughout the record is that, you know, that was something that had to, for a better word, slap the whole way through. Yeah. <laughs> and something that had a lot of um, importance and priority over it. Um, as you obviously did really well in the Atmos mix, it was something that I just wanted to, again, enhance further if I could. Um, so what I did here was um, just very subtle um, EQ, just to try and get a bit more of that aggression out at that kind of like 3K region. Mm -hmm. Um, it was already there, again, just trying to kind of get more hype, more aggression out of the master. I just felt that we could just go, I mean, a tiny bit more with that. Um, equally, one of uh, you know, my personal favorites with here is, again, just sort of layering up on that ever so slightly, even more so with something that's a bit more, got a bit more taste and character and a bit more of a, of a sort of um, gnarly characteristic and a bit more saturation more in that EQ, which is nice. And then lastly, just to try and bring the bass, um, you know, forward a little bit more, just using the Fairchild here, just to kind of give it more hype, mm -hmm. for a better word. It's such a present compressor. It is. It yeah, really it's mad. It makes things, elements stand out of the mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way. So we'll just play the bass and uh, the beds here, uh, which include the drums, so that you can hear how those elements now sound. Your brain is all in your mental, give you that healing, nigga. So you can hear that it's, it's pretty gnarly. <laughs> uh, and again, this is just now with the added, uh, sorry, without the uh, added high, um, high end and, and subtle compression. Your brain is all in your mental, give you that healing nigga like a sense who, uh, yeah. Been through the pain, that shit is sensual, all of my scars, that be my credentials. Uh, yeah. 
So in, in regards to uh, in sort of Studio B, which we're in now, and the mastering, spatial mastering process, and how we're sort of utilizing Aurea to its fullest potential, the sort of, you know, the benefit of having the ability to go from two channel to uh, Atmos at the flick of a button is just, it's a bit of a game changer to say the least. And the sort of confidence in knowing that the the uh, configuration and setup of um, the Aurea in the room is consistent with our other spaces as well um, is absolutely paramount to sort of a true representation of what we're listening to. And also when you're coming in here to sign off on my masters, it's something that arguably is equally as important that you're trusting the room and trusting what you're hearing mm. and know the space well. Um, and, you know, that aside, what we ensure that we're always doing is making sure that we're listening to the master on various, uh, you know, mediums and various devices, whether it be listening on headphones, spatial audio headphones, um, always checking on a like a, an Atmos soundbar, as well as, um, you know, out of a, a phone or a computer that is, um, you know, Atmos enabled to ensure that it has got really good sort of um, translation on all these devices. Um, and at that stage, you know, making sure that we're hitting minus 18 for sure <laughs> in regards to the uh, the renderer. Um, and at that point, we're then ready finally after all those stages to, to ship it to, to client and to make sure that, um, you know, it gets full sign off.